Hello everybody, this is a little presentation because uh, to show you what you need to do to get ready to apply for college. As Racing Seniors, I want you to be ready and maximize the time that you have to do this without being overly stressed with all the things that we have to do during your senior year. So I hope this helps and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me anytime. Uh, actually the best person to ask is always your counselor. but I just want to give you a general view so you can get started as soon as possible. So we're going to start with the senior profile. This is a document that you have to turn in to your counselor at the beginning of the year and based on what you, it's a series of questions and these are questions about you that you have to think about yourself, your characteristics, your traits, the issues that you have had, how you have overcome issues, how the pandemic has affected you, etc., etc. Uh, the reason the counselors ask for this senior profile and all these questions is because they need to write you a letter, usually for college, and some of the information they are going to get it out of the senior profile. So please do a very good job answering this because it is good material for your counselors to write your letter of recommendation. Uh, where can you access this? If you go to Google and you just Google Oakton High School Senior Profile, you will see there is a document with lots of questions and the more time you have to answer them, the better, because as I said before, you have to think about some of the answers and try to do a good job for this. So this would be one of the first things that you need to start working and thinking about it. Just in case, next year, uh, you are going to need to fill out another form. And again, if you Google Oakton High School Transcript Request, you are going to get this form. Uh, this is a form that you are going to need to turn in about one month before your first deadline, one month before, and includes a list of the colleges that you are applying, uh, how you are applying, early action, early decision, and if you need a letter of recommendation from your counselor. And of course, you are going to have to pay um, a certain fee, so be prepared for that and just be aware of this so you don't get caught by surprise when the time comes to do it. And the deadline is very important. Besides this other document, you need to think about your letters of recommendation. Uh, how do you know if you need a letter of recommendation? Well, you need to go to the different colleges, the school that you're applying, the college that you're applying, to their website, basically to admissions, and see what are the admission requirements. And it will tell you uh, what type of classes you need and how many letters of recommendation, if you need a letter of recommendation. Usually, not always, but usually, if you need one, usually that is going to come from the counselor. If you need two, usually again, it might be from a core teacher. So be aware of what you need and ask to your teachers or counselor as soon as you can, because many teachers have uh, limits on how many letters they can write effectively. And please remember that these letters are not about necessarily your grades, because they can the colleges can see your grades. The letters are mostly about you and your character, your personality, what type of person you are. So make sure you ask a teacher that uh, somehow has gotten to know you a little bit better. Right? So senior profile, transcripts and letters of recommendation. And now something that you are going to need for now and the rest of your life and it's a good time to get it started is a resume. A resume is basically a summary of all the things that you have done volunteering, activities, honor societies, awards, basically anything that is relevant, but only during high school. Uh, before high school, it really doesn't count, unless it's something that you started earlier, like uh, taking piano lessons or some other activity. Uh, sports, anything, uh, you go here. Uh, a good template, according to my students, is a Google template. So check it out and most of what I'm telling you is based on what my 
seniors have been telling me and I'm just passing the word around. So start working on your resume because you're going to keep on adding things non-stop. You're going to need this uh, next year for a number of things, especially if you are applying to scholarships or jobs or internships or a number of other things. All right. So four little documents. Uh, I, if you are going to pick one to get going, senior profile would be my choice. All right, now the, the process of applying for college for real. So I'm going to magnify here a little bit. The most common process is what you have heard probably, the common app. This is a portal where a lot of uh, colleges use the same portal. So you provide all the information in one place and all the colleges get it. So all the colleges that are in this portal. So the common app. So first, you are going to need to create an account for the Common App and you can Google Common App and get it, commonapp.org I think it is. You're going to create an account and please use a personal email, not the school email, not the school email. And also according to my seniors, they recommend to create a brand new email just for the college application process. So your regular email doesn't get um, or you don't get too many emails that are just uh, junk email mixed up with your regular college application emails. All right, so what is in the Common App? The Common App is going to have a section where you are going to enter a lot of common information. There are a lot of tabs for this. Uh, education, family, where have you lived, information about your school, uh, your activities, the classes that you are taking as a senior. It's a lot of information and this takes a lot of time and you are going to have a lot of questions to ask to, my fa to your family or other people because you don't know the answers. That's why this is a little bit time consuming. So get started, get it done because this is going to reduce your stress. What else is in this common part of the common app? They have a number of prompts. I don't remember how many, about eight prompts. And you have to pick one. And basically, that's your common app essay. So my recommendation, look at all the prompts that are available and start thinking about for which one of those you have the most material or is the easiest for you to write about and start, you know, collecting information, brainstorming, so you can start working on it before school starts. All this, ideally, get it done before school starts because this is stressful and time consuming. So you have all this information, the common essay, all colleges that you are going to apply through the common app will get exactly the same. Everybody gets the same. Now, you are going to apply for several colleges, for example, that are in the common app. So for every college that you apply, every college will have what is called a supplement. So you apply to college one. Well, college one has a supplement and that supplement can be either more questions or another series of essays or prompts that they want you to answer. And of course, there is an application fee. You apply to college two, same thing, that college will have a supplement college three a supplement so for each college you have more information to provide more essays more things like that so according to my seniors a good thing is create create like a spreadsheet or a big document where you put all this information and try to reuse and recycle and use the essays uh, pieces from one to another so you can keep track of everything uh, of course each one of those is associated with an application fee, so the cost can add up. So be mindful and start looking now at what they are requiring in terms of essays so you have time to think and process through the summer and start um, collecting data and information about what you might want to put in those essays. Um, so. All these, of course, these within the Common App, you're also going to have a section where you're going to enter the email of your counselor or teachers that you are going to write the letter that you are requesting letters of recommendation from. Uh, important that you know, 
even if you are not done with your portion of the application you can already send as early as right away you can send the link or the email inviting your teachers to write your letter as soon as possible so you do not have to be done to ask your teachers or counselors um, for the recommendation and I recommend that you do this send those links or that request as soon as possible because it takes some time for your counselors and teachers to uh, write the letters uh, your, most of your teachers can have to do this after hours whenever they have time so please do that now the common app provides information about colleges um, I was told this year that please always verify that information about the different colleges by going to the colleges website the admissions page and see exactly what the college requires in terms of letters of recommendation classes etc etc so with that that's a big view of the common app common information a common essay and then the supplements for each one of the colleges that you are applying so a good idea create a spreadsheet spreadsheet with all these requirements or just a big piece of paper and keep track of the information and what you need for each one of them this part definitely you should try to get it done as soon as possible all right there are some colleges that uh, are not part of the common app and they use a different portal to apply and that's the coalition if you have a co and it's very similar they ask you for common information and then essays and so forth um, if you have colleges that use both the coalition and the common app please use the common app it's a more stable portal apparently doesn't crash as much so it's um, and in one place you can get everything at once so beware of that that some colleges use coalition a different portal and finally there are some schools that actually use a different system they have their own application process and one of them is Georgetown in this area and apparently all the University of California schools have their own portal but one portal for all the California schools so if you apply to more than one California school you just use one portal for all of them and again it's kind of the same information so once you fill it out in one place you at least have that information ready and you can use it in all the other places so that's kind of a nutshell what it is and ideally try to get it done as soon as possible to minimize stress and have more free time for your classes at the beginning of your senior year now once you apply for college what are the choices in terms of um, when to what kind of decision that they have so there are four flavors that I call one is early decision early decision is what they call binding so you can only apply to one school early decision because if you get accepted you go uh, the deadline for these are usually either October 15 or November 1st for the most part and then you get your results sometime in December or so and if you are accepted you are done you go um, there is only one way to get out of this binding apparently and is if when they give you the financial aid package uh, that is not enough for your uh, economic situation then you can decline without getting in trouble or anything so financial issues are the only way to um, get away from the bindingness of the early decision right now when you apply to early decision you're gonna have three options you are gonna be accepted you are in you are gonna be rejected you are out or you can be deferred you have three options there you can be deferred and when you are deferred you are sent basically your documentation goes into the regular pool of applicants then you have what is called early action this is not binding and you can apply to as many schools as you want 
and the deal with uh, early action is that all the deadlines again are either October 15 or November 1st so you are gonna find out very soon if you are accepted or whatever what are the options here you are accepted you are in you are totally rejected you are out or you are deferred to the regular uh, pool of applicants then you can apply of course regular I think the regular usually is the deadline is January 1st for applications and when you apply for regular uh, you have again three options you are gonna be accepted you are in you are gonna be rejected you are out or you are gonna be waitlisted and waitlisted means that you are not gonna hear from them until sometime in May finally there is a fourth type of admission that some colleges have and that is rolling and when you have rolling basically as soon as you send your application uh, they look at it and they tell you immediately you are in or you are out so some students like to do a role in school early on just to have a feeling that okay I got into some place so keep an eye on those rolling and the recommendation is if you want to go to a school with rolling admission apply as soon as possible because they review the applications uh, basically as they come so with this I try to make it brief and informative so I hope this helps again the reason I'm providing this is so you know what you're doing and you can get started working on all these things uh, ideally before the school starts so you can reduce your stress and have a more clear picture of what you are gonna be doing uh, the other part that I didn't mention of course is figuring out what schools you want to go to and do the proper research about which colleges and what do they offer and that's part of the information that you have to do in their individual websites okay so i hope this helps i hope you enjoyed the college application process reduce stress and enjoy your senior year thank you for listening <laughs>